from Somerville. This is Greetings from Somerville. I am your host, Michael Somerville. Thanks for tuning in. Today's theme, airplanes. What's the deal with airplanes? <laughs> if that's not a hacky enough topic for comedy. Uh, but no, the, today I want to talk about flying because that's uh, our guest is going to enlighten us in some ways. And um, I obviously as a comedian fly an awful lot and it's part of the job whether you like it or not. And I remember the first time I ever flew somewhere for comedy was a flight from Newark Airport, New Jersey to Chicago and I remember feeling guilty, like there it was wrong because I was. It, that's not a legitimate business purpose to fly somewhere to tell jokes. My dad is a businessman, and he flies around wearing a suit, carrying a briefcase, and doing office meetings. And that to me was what a job was, and that's what you flew somewhere to do. You didn't fly to tell jokes. So I remember feeling that way, but I went through, and, and of course, since then have been on. A zillion flights. I'm actually nearing, I think, the million mile mark um, of, of total f mileage flown for comedy, which is insane. And everything, good flights, bad flights, red eyes, missed flights, uh, crazy people next to me. I sat next to a woman who was had her headphones in and she played imaginary an imaginary drum set for the entire six hour flight. And I another dude uh, went to Hawaii, New York to Hawaii, ten hour flight. Guy got on the plane with nothing to do. No book, no computer. He starts looking at me like I, and I was like, headphones in, I am not your friend. <laughs> you know? I put on a movie for two hours. This guy watched me watch a movie. But anyway, I've, I've sat next to all sorts of people, but it brings me to just a week ago, uh, I got upgraded to first class, which does not happen often, but when it does, it is glorious. And I got bumped up and seated next to a bitter-looking businessman who was clearly one of these guys who just felt he was more important than everyone else in the world, and all of a sudden, I was sitting, sitting next to him, and he was instantly furious. I'm wearing cargo shorts, a ripped t-shirt, Notre Dame visor with my big afro popping out the top, and you could just, this guy was seething. He hated me. He didn't know why I was sitting next to him, and suddenly, I was his equal, and I'm just a cheery guy. I said, hello. He kind of grunted back. I'm fine. And we take off, I take out some comedy notes, I'm working, and I can just feel him angry next to me, just kind of looking over and watch this kid's do. I wasn't doing it, I wasn't even taking up the armrest. And finally he can't help himself, and he's just like, what, 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 what line of work are you in? And I, and I just looked with a big cheesy grin, and I hammed it up, and I go, I'm a comedian. Because <laughs> I knew it would drive him nuts. And he just, his head almost popped off. He just couldn't wrap his head around with the fact that he's like, he kept saying, you, 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 you tell jokes. You, 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 you fly around the country just telling jokes. And I said, yes, yeah. They, they give you money for that? I said, well, that's kind of a personal question, but yes, sir. <laughs> and this guy for the entire trip, he just, just, drive, just drove him nuts, drove him nuts. I don't know if he was questioning his own life choices, but I, every time he asked me something, I just got nicer and nicer. Uh, but I, I was so happy because I was thinking back on that first flight when I felt guilty for even flying somewhere to tell jokes, as silly as that sounds. And here I was just totally in my own skin, sitting in first class going, yep, that's what I do. <laughs> All right, let's get to our guest. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, welcome <laughs> back. The, my guest today is one of my favorite people on the planet. Hello, Spencer Peralta. What's uh, going on? What's up? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm so glad I even said your name correctly. Uh, yes. I, and I know, I'll never forget how to say it because I remember the day we met, you taught me. It's because it's spelled uniquely. Very. H A Y L E I. Is yes, that true? Yes, it is. Um, but you said just think fillet, as in <laughs> <laughs> fillet like fillet, and I, I never for, have forgotten ever since. Yep, no. Um, you fillet is here because fillet is well is a pilot actually, an mm -hmm. airplane pilot, which I, I knew you were studying to be a pilot, and I found that fascinating, and I thought it would be fun to talk to you about it on the show. Um, but I, what I didn't realize is that you actually are a 
single engine pilot? Yes. Okay, so tell us a little about what that involves or what, what what's the difference? That means you can fly a, let me guess, single engine plane? Yes. Okay. So single propeller. Single propeller. <laughs> yes, it's a propeller. What is, oh, literally like as literally opposed a to? A double which on your wings. Okay. So it's on the nose of the plane. Oh, yeah. like in the movies when they're doing crops and stuff? Yes, and yeah, I can be a crop duster is pretty much my only <laughs> gig right now. Yeah. So you can fly a single propeller plane? Yes. Okay. Now l let's back up before we even... Okay. How did you get interested? Were you... Uh, did you grow up as a person who couldn't... Uh, loved planes, wanted to fly, played with toy planes? How do you want to become a pilot? So I had this this um, dream of mine to where I loved animals and I wanted to be a zoologist. But I didn't love it enough to not... To stay in one spot. I wanted to travel so much. Um, so I decided... When my brother was actually dating this flight attendant, she kept saying to be a flight attendant, you'll travel, you meet really cool guys and stuff. And that doesn't intrigue me as much of right. meeting people I wanted to. How, actually... how old were you at the time? <laughs> You're six. Yeah. You're gonna meet. You're gonna meet a lot of men. <laughs> like eleven. I was Slow pretty down. much eleven years old. <laughs> right? I know it's not. Slow down. Yeah. So I was like eleven years old, and he was dating this flight attendant. Really cool chick. She did travel a lot. She lived all over the different countries and the states and whatnot, but. Mainly, I realized I wasn't smart enough to be a zoologist, and it kind of like, just, I don't know, I ended up going to <laughs> pilot school, because I dropped out of my other school, it was just a mess. But Zo Zoologist. Yes, I'm going to okay. be a zoologist. And at age 11, you at ruled that 11, out? At age 11, yeah. <laughs> you really made some big life decisions early on, huh? <laughs> yes, definitely. You're already shutting down avenues in, yes, in fifth definitely. grade. Okay. Um. But the, that was like that was a highlight because then I realized when she told me and talked to me about being a flight attendant that I didn't want to hand out peanuts or soda or help people with vomit bags. I was just not into that at all. So I did a little bit more research and realized after watching like some interesting movies, Pearl Harbor and things like that, like how intense it could be to learn how to fly these things. Um, and I don't know. To me, it just kind of stuck out that way it, it was okay yeah, yeah. now i shouldn't note by the way a couple of things one as someone who didn't care to hand out peanuts or yeah. drinks you did bring beer to the podcast yes, recording I did. I was, I mean, and I, you handed it out to all of us yes <laughs> definitely it was one of those i mean just coming you can't come empty-handed i had to bring a, a sidekick here and i had to bring I, some beer I, you just gotta come prepared speaking of it you and i wish more guests felt that way you're the first person to bring anything Woo. Uh, but and, and you also brought uh, a guest. I've never had a guest bring a guest before. Um, but we have. If you hear giggling in the background, that's our good friend Kim, and she. <laughs> I'm not sure why she's here. Uh, she, she heard there's going to be booze. I believe is yeah yeah. So Kim came. Uh, it's kind of nice though. It's kind of like you have a PR person. It's like your manager, yes. or your agents here. Yeah. yeah yeah. And Kim is over there just drinking on the couch and and. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm good for. Yes, no, you're doing great. You're killing yes. it. You you know your lane. <laughs> okay, so uh, so okay, but you do strike me if, and I know you uh, well enough to know that you are a bit of like you're kind of handy. I always think of you as not quite a tomboy, but uh, not that you are by any means. But you are kind of hands on, right? You're good oh, at yeah. cars and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Is I, I grew up with two older brothers and one older sister. My sister and I are completely opposite. She's the cheerleader slash dancer performer um girly girl I, I was we used to share a room and my mom used to say that when she walks in it should be two separate rooms and <laughs> just because mine was kind of more on the skateboard surfboards and here's hers with butterflies and flowers pink and, things yes, and... pink, definitely shaggy carpets all that good stuff <laughs> um but my brothers really did help me big time with like learning hands on. Um, in high school, I took auto, and uh, that was just kind of that or wood really? shop. So I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna benefit from auto way more than wood. Right. So I ended up learning how to change my own oil, brakes, tires, alignments, things I'm like that. Very impressive. Very, yes. As a man who can do absolutely nothing, as you, you well know. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's good. It's an impressive <laughs> thing to hear, though. Uh, okay. Do you think that is it at all involved, associated with your interest in, in planes and flying, or is it definitely? Uh, yeah. I would say because the fact after getting uh, my single engine, now working on my multi engine. Multi engine. Um, so that means two propellers on the wings of the plane. Two propeller. Okay. Yes, yes. Now let's uh, explain that to me. So propeller versus a uh, what? A, a, an engine or what? Are, yes, what do they call like, um, the alternative? 
it'd be technically just an engine is what they would be the the fuel engines in that sense um with that being said it just the horsepower and when you think of it the nautical miles per hour all that good stuff comes into action okay so technically my plane can only go so many feet up in the air versus a a like Airbus, I can go thousands of feet up. Airbus being like a commercial, a big, commercial like, plane, yeah, yes. an actual, okay. Yes. okay. So, th- so that's, you... <laughs> there's a big difference of the two. I can barely make it over the Rocky Mountains, let me tell you. <laughs> that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, you actually, though, when we were talking about it once, you mentioned that you preferred single engine over double engine. It was, I did. Which was, it was an interesting conversation, I did. right? I just, I feel b- flying both of them, the single engine you can glide a little bit better. Okay. Um, you'd still obviously have your wings and whatnot, but the double engine, everyone thinks that if you, you know, your one propeller goes out, you have your other one, but it's a lot of pressure for that little guy to keep it going, you know? <laughs> so you would rather shut that other one off to keep it stable and just glide it down. Okay. Um, so it just really depends on what, I mean, circumstances you're under, too. So, okay. Yeah. A, well, it doesn't sound, I mean, you're not off like, in war or anything. No. You're simply. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, who's, you said you're a plane. Do you have a plane, or whose plane do you fly? I fly, I, I fly, I fly my professor's plane. So okay. he owns a plane back over in John Wayne Airport, which is a oh, very, sure. very short um, runway, which you got to learn fast um, on would... getting your nose up and your tail down. So, wow. Yeah. So it's a like an unusually short it's runway. It's a lot short. Yeah, it's no, something that you don't really want to practice on the first couple times, but <laughs> I had no, no choice. Is that what you learned? Yeah, it was like half off, so might as well go. <laughs> <laughs> got to save it all. Yeah, yeah. It's the these days off. are just may, so expensive. You may or may not make it, mm-hmm. but yeah. <laughs> You got the discount flight. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, tell, tell us then. Bring us through the process. What is involved hour-wise, time-wise? How do you get for your single uh, license, single um, prop? So it takes about, for my single engine, um, it single takes, engine. yeah, it takes about um, anywhere from a year and a half to two years. And okay. it did take me a little over two years just because working, doing it all by myself, it, it, it takes a toll, and I like to still enjoy myself and travel, so I didn't really put all my nickel and dime into this, right. but... So it's something you can do at your convenience yes. at night and, and weekends. Exactly, yeah. and okay. that's, that's the beauty of it. It's more, I always have to remind myself, it needs to be more of a hobby, not a mm-hmm. not a just a career choice, which eventually, hopefully, it will be my career choice. Um, but I do feel that with it, it should have taken taking only a year <laughs> <laughs> but okay. the things got in the way which is fine okay but, well yeah. that happens and that's life yeah hour wise um for flying it can be it varies it depends on how much flight time you do have um for my single i have about 45 hours okay yeah and you're looking at almost 200 dollars an hour so two hundred dollars an hour to fly to fly oh my goodness that was my professor fuel in the plane rental wow yeah. Oh yeah. boy, it's not cheap. It's not cheap, um, but you know what? It was definitely a, you got to learn quick. Let me tell you that. Yeah, learn, I was gonna say. Yes, and so and on top of that, I paid for like a simulator class. So back home, I would have um, kind of like hooked onto my laptop. I felt like a huge nerd, which is awesome. Like just sitting there with my little simulator sticks, joysticks, and like whatnot. My <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was taxiing, you know, taxiing. apparently, <laughs> just just kind of doing all these different things and, like, practicing while, while your on... sister's over painting flowers. Definitely, and... yeah. <laughs> Dancing in front of the TV, all that good stuff. Um, now, tell us about the first time you actually flew. You were behind uh, the, you were, you were the pilot. And yes. What um, is that like? It was, it was, oh my gosh, I don't. I don't think I've ever sweated so much in my life. And on top of that, I was a runner. I was running in high school. I did pole vaulting, (laughs) high jump. So I was constantly sweating all my life. But this moment, I was dehydrated. Really? After the fact. Yeah. My, just because. Just nerves? Oh my gosh, yes. Think about it. I'm flying. I can't imagine. And, okay. (laughs) Well, try. (laughs) Try at this point. (laughs) Man. Try and imagine. Getting heckled on my own show. (laughs) So sorry. (laughs) But I just want you to understand how how important it is to 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 realize how much training a pilot has at this point in time. When well, you it sounds like you took a lot of shortcuts, actually. Well, no, <laughs> fuck the beer, just be happy. <laughs> 
sack, the pilot brings beer to the. <laughs> I'm not flying right now, so right. we're good. <laughs> no, but what uh, were you with the instructor? Are they behind you? Is someone there? Oh, uh, sitting right next to me. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so, and, but you are in charge. You, yeah, you I am in charge. The show. So my professor is Valdez. His la- we call him by his last name. I don't even think I know his first name. It's like okay. John or something. But um, yeah, he was sitting there. He's like, "Are you ready?" And I said. Well, I think so. Oh, we taxied, and he said, make a left, and I accidentally made a right, and he's like, I don't think we are. I don't think you're ready. And I was like, you know what? Is I, this on the short runway? This is, yes, this is. But you know what? We did a couple donuts. I mean, donuts in a plane were perfect. You got the nerves worked out. Okay, all right. Ended up doing a few of those, and he's like, okay, well, let's, we went over all the commands, talking to the tower, and I was talking to him. I looked over. I was like, well, you know what? I've always said I've lived long enough. In the sense of, if anything happened, I know I'm doing what I love, and I would rather, God forbid, if I died, I would die doing something exciting versus a heart attack. Something, something like okay. So, hey, how did he respond to that? It's a heck of a last thing to say well, before you take off. <laughs> he, I've lived long enough. <laughs> he gave me a little fist pump, and he said, that's exactly what, where I'm at today. And he said that's probably one of the first things so I said. So he didn't said. have a lot of confidence in you either. No, no. <laughs> I was the only girl in the class, so I get oh, okay. a, I had a lot of confidence. But I think he was just <laughs> understanding that, you know what, this is going to be a passion. This is actually really, in this sense, um, an excitement. I mean, it's yeah. it's part of the adrenaline. It's thrill. It's excitement. It's, it's everything you can think of. And once you once I got that nose up when I was over the freeway, because that's where John Wayne Airport is. It goes uh, over a freeway. Sure, yeah. It was just... A busy area in yes, Southern California to yes. anyone who doesn't know the area. Yeah. Yeah, and it just is... You're flying. I was flying. Were you like 10 feet off the ground? Or were you like... <laughs> I think I would have <laughs> kept it. I was like, it. I'm climbing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think I would have kept it at that height. So anything goes wrong, I just sort of jump and roll, yeah, you know. <laughs> no, by then, by, by the time we went over to the coast, it was a couple hundred. Oh, and boy, you flew to the coast. I flew over the... Yeah, I flew to the coast. Were you wearing like cool glasses I, and a jacket? Or how do you, how do you no, dress for that? Not that one, no. <laughs> no? No. No, it wasn't Aviators? Like, aviators for sure, yeah. yeah. I was in a jumpsuit. I'm, I'm always repping the jumpsuit around. You know? I love it. I Got love to. it. I want to work on my car. <laughs> is that I... true? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is adorable. Thank you. <laughs> only because I, I know you. I don't mean to sound condescending. <laughs> I could just see you. Like, yeah. yeah, okay. Is, is, is that like you're supposed to wear a jumpsuit when you fly or is that just um, a training thing? Or? It's kind of a training thing. It just okay. kind of shows, I mean, whenever you're on the ground um, and you're walking around the the, the facility, they're, they know the difference of a uh, I guess you can say an instructor. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. So we identify. Student, things like that. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So being in the the jumpsuit and and sometimes it depends. Um, with my class, there's like three different color jumpsuits, so it showed which, how much time you put in and uh, like what ranking you are. Like a black belt. Okay. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. But I was a blue belt. I mean, that was my jumpsuit. Was a blue one. Okay. Yeah. What? Where's that rank? The middle. The middle. Okay, the middle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> now I'm like totally in the, the black belt style. Uh, look at yeah. ah, yeah. see, it's she, gray she's now. so she's it's so and she's gray. trying to be. <laughs> it's turning black. I see. <laughs> um, is it? Um, have you flown alone? Have you ever been up without anyone? Yes, I've done my solo. Wow, yeah. is that what they call it solo? A okay. solo, and I did it with a double engine. Oh my so, goodness! Even though I'm taking classes, I wasn't. I mean, my professor actually helped me learn how to do my double engine as I was training back home. Okay. Um, got that done, and that was a, a gnarly experience because in that moment, I had to do my first stall ever. And this, what, what is a stall that? is, you go up to a certain amount of feet, a um, couple hundred at this point, and you just nosedive down, and you have to get yourself out of it. Oh my goodness! Yeah. So you're flying, and you just start nose diving. And you pretty much pretend towards that your the engines. Earth. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, and then you have to get yourself out of it. Yeah. But is that that doesn't sound healthy? It does. It's definitely <laughs> it's just, not healthy. Just, I mean, it sounds like you could black out or something. Like it doesn't. I probably did. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you made it here somehow, so of yes. course someone pulled you out of it. But no, no but yes. you tell, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You, no, it's okay. I mean, you have to. You have to learn these things. I mean, just like all those movies, Sully, all the, the Hudson River type movies, and all that. Right. I mean, you have to put yourself in the worst, um, 
situations, and that's one of the big things with with engines. That's what I was saying. The, the single engine, to me, it's just a little bit more graceful of a glide down. Okay. Double engine, if one of them's still going, you that it's starting to skip a beat, and you have to now control that, plus glide down. It could that be a mess. That sounds terrifying. Is there <laughs> someone, is your professor with you, then? That, he just... He's been there once, and the other time I had to do it alone. Oh, yes. I would want a few black belts with me during that. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, definitely. And what is the, I mean, what are the circumstances that you'd ever be in that situation where you're just spiraling altitudes. towards the earth? It just depends on the altitudes, um, depends on where you're flying. So from California, if I keep going north, I mean, you're looking at more mountains, more thinner ah. air. So the higher you go, I mean, obviously, the more the engines work a little bit to keep keep the air flowing through and keep it Okay. It, Keep yourself above, and you know all that good stuff. And so, to me, I was where was I flying to? I think I was flying. We were directed towards Vegas. That was our next stop. So did a stall because it was over the desert. It was like perfect way, you know, in case something happens, just <laughs> land in the middle of the desert. Yeah, right. not, um, not killing anyone else at least. I, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I've lived long enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, just pretty much and you know going that way, that that this was the time I did it alone. And I just remember thinking to myself, like, all right, if I can't do this, definitely this is it and second <laughs> off. And this is probably not a good choice of a career for me. So I ended up <laughs> yeah. passing. It's one way to learn, yeah. Yeah. I, I did a pretty cool job. I mean, I, I think I did pretty good. I mean my professor was just really proud of me too and that class was free, so okay. I didn't have to pay for it. So, hey, okay. he had total confidence in me. You're all about yeah. the discount flying instructors, <laughs> huh? Well, because when I'm not flying, I end up selling jewelry on the side. Okay. At a good local jewelry store in Hawaii, so uh, there you go. To fund your habit. To fund my habit <laughs> yes. of success, yes. Now, you, what is the most fun, then? If that sounds like probably one of the scarier things that could happen yeah. or, or your experience, what do you love the most about it? Um... I've actually, when my first couple times flying solo um, on a single engine, the best times I ever had on it was doing kind of dinner flights. So my professor and I, to make hours for myself, um, we would pack a basket, and he would he already had this job kind of going. He would take different students to fly, mm -hmm. um, and you know, God bless the souls of the people that signed up for this. Um, but he would put out this flyer type thing, and you would have you know. Um, either married couples, dating couples, and they would come and take a fly over the, the ocean oh, and nice. see the sunset. And we would we would pack the wine, the snacks, oh things my like God, that. Yeah, yeah. So that was that's probably been the best thing. And and when you have those couples like on board, you don't do the whole "I've lived long enough" thing. Do no. You? Okay. <laughs> Anything. Before I just, you take I pretend off. I don't speak English at that point. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because they don't understand the commands anyways. All right, you know? they would understand that line. They would, oh, uh, they yeah, would. they would. <laughs> and that's one you that would I... Confess their old hands. We've lived long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, we'd like to get our money back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that does sound awesome, though. And, and as, yeah, all of a sudden you're actually doing, like, you're flying people. You're doing something that's not just you. It's it's all of a sudden you're part of something. De yeah. Yeah, and, that's... And it's been, it's been a blast. I mean, I, I continue to get, give myself some pressure on it because I do know that I want, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I know that need to buckle down a little bit more which is understandable but I mean there's so many things that I keep thinking to myself that I want it to be more of a hobby than it is okay anything else and more of a stress factor well, like 200 bucks an hour to fly is, is yeah. I, mean, I mean that's that's definitely a yeah. challenge though it's definitely not, yeah. can be and I mean it's a lot of jewelry things like oh yeah it's a lot of jewelry <laughs> <laughs> now you mentioned you were the only female in your class mm -hmm. and I think that's super cool yeah. and I, I would guess not knowing anything about the industry I would guess that it is largely male dominated. I mean, I feel like most of the pilots I I fly every week, and I'm always mm -hmm. usually a male pilot. Yeah. Uh, is that is that the case? Is it generally it male? It definitely is. It's usually the male, um, and or it's um, Air Force. That's that's the two. Okay. The two dominant. Um, I guess you can say that they look for first. So when they see my name on the list, they will, you know they'll see female checked off, obviously. Right. And they. They like to um, quiz me. They like to ask me too many questions, and it's like, I already know the answer. 
and my resume is built, and my classes are taken. And Who, no, who's asking you this? Um, like, the colleges I've been applying for. So I applied for Embry-Riddle in Florida and in Colorado. Okay. And those are really good, pristine schools to start working towards my commercial license. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and even then, it's just, but you're a female. Really? It does, yes. In and this day and age? this day and age. It is, wow. It's hard. I mean, sometimes, too, It's it, that's why I always have to be like on my A game with my professor because I if his letter of recommendation comes in then that's perfect. He used to fly for United Airlines, American Airlines. I mean, he, okay. he's done it from the ground up like me, like mm-hmm. myself. And he never did Air Force and that's all I've ever been told is like just go to the Air Force. You get more ranking and higher, higher, almost like looks. Like people look at your resume before they would if you just do it as re- regular Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So they're saying, um, as a stepping stone to become, say, like a commercial mm-hmm. pilot, go to the Air Force, yes. get that on your resume. Yeah. That, I imagine, is not as easily said than done, right? I mean, no, that, well, Air Force is a big deal. Uh, just, yeah, I tell them yeah. every time. I'm like, you know, I'm signing myself up for other things, too, yeah, not I, just to fly. Right. Like, um, That's, I, you're going to the armed forces. Yes. It's not like getting a Target discount card. I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> I don't get 5% back at yeah, this point. I'm yeah, off the discount. Exactly. I know you love the discount. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's, I love how nonchalantly, yeah, I joined the Air Force. I was like, well, that's a, yeah, that's kind of a significant thing. Definitely. But better you than me. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is the goal then? Is it uh, to become ultimately, uh, like to fly for United, to fly for a, a huge ass plane? Uh, you know what? That's always been the goal. I would love to fly to work for a, a great company as one of those, but I was introduced to a helicopter flight um, a couple months back, and now a, a craving of mine or desire of mine is to learn how to fly them, and I just feel A helicopter? Like helicopter. Wow. So when I ended up um, traveling to, uh, to Australia, I went to the little island, as they call it, of Tasmania. Mm-hmm. And I was able to do a helicopter ride out there and learn some some things about it. Really? As yeah, and here in Hawaii too, I was very fortunate. My um, one of the district managers with the company I work with, they their husband's a flight instructor, and he's okay. learning his helicopter license. So I got a free ride out of that thing too. And wow, I, I think I have a passion for that too. Discount helicopter ride. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, sign me up. Now that I mean that is fascinating. I'm I would group on. guess that. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm ever getting on an airplane and I look up and see you and the pilot in the cockpit, I'm not sure how I'm going to feel. Just to, oh yeah, doing the sign of the cross. We've lived long enough. We got free gas on this one. Free gas. I don't think there's any in there. <laughs> I would think that it's different, uh, drastically different, I would think. The helicopter controls versus an airplane. Is it not? Is it? Is it is it? drastically different in, in ways. I mean, the... The commands are the same in that sense, but it okay. is like, I remember the guy in Tasmania was saying, it's like rubbing your stomach, patting your head, and jumping on one leg. I mean, you're just, it's your body, everything takes a minute to, to takes. get co- coordinated together. Okay. And same thing with the, the helicopter. I mean, it was an amazing experience, but once again, your propeller's on top of you, not in front of you, or yeah. on the sides of you, so. I would think. Yeah. What was well, the third thing? Rubbing your belly, patting your head. <laughs> and jumping on one leg. Jumping on one leg. Okay. <laughs> I can't even that. say it, let alone do it. <laughs> okay. Never mind then. Um, you, one of the things I hear as a novice who knows nothing, uh, are you getting bored? No. All right, you want another beer? Right. Oh, uh, no, we're <laughs> okay. still good. I'm um, just thinking. <laughs> you're thinking. You look so pensive over there. <laughs> you, you do have that I've lived long enough face right now. <laughs> How many questions is this guy going to ask me? No, My keep goodness. it coming, keep it coming. <laughs> um, computer versus human. As a person who knows nothing but, you know, I sit on an airplane and get flown around, uh, I keep hearing that they're largely computer run, that the computers generally fly the plane these days, they land it, they do everything. Is, is that true? And if so, what... It, it, it concerns me because I would think then, like, well, why do we need the pilot? Or when something goes <laughs> wrong, you really, really need the pilot. Are they as well trained these days? Or are we used to – what? tell me about computers these days and, and how it's affecting you guys. Um, I would say, well, flying says it's not – You, it's all your own knowledge at that point. You have your different instruments that it has nothing to do with computer work. Okay. Um. I would say, obviously, bigger aircrafts, uh, commercial-wise, there's definitely 
a lot of technology involved in that, which is, comes in handy. It's just like those new cars that they keep cr in um, creating and making. It's, it can help somebody, but now if something wires cross, something goes wrong, I mean, the person that's driving the car better know how to drive the car. Yeah. And same thing with the plane. And I think that it's it comes in handy and it helps to prevent certain things from happening. Right. Um, so you can tell the altitude and the distance or the term the turbulence so many feet in front of you on an airplane you can you can register those things before you fly through it so okay. you can brace yourself and the rest of the passengers behind you right you can sleep outside on ahead of time right instead of during the time yeah um but with it definitely with Cessnas it's it's just all your knowledge I mean you have to you have to know um how to read everything. I mean, at that point, I have, like, a flight calculator, which is not a calculator, let me tell you that thing. You have to, like, turn it certain ways, because you get... I always listen to You cast. bought a discount one. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> batteries not included, yes. <laughs> Definitely. But it's, it's one of those things, too, where it's, like, you... If you don't know the basics, then you don't... When you get to the real thing, the big thing, which is the commercial planes, the, right. the air buses, I mean, you wouldn't know how to register them, and in case of emergency, how, how do you personally, physically land this thing? Right, right. So, and I do feel like it's hindering a lot of people because, you know, the Air Force, they are equipped with a lot more than what, you know, other flight schools are offered. Okay. Um, so, when they come into action and they actually t show you certain things, it's you're, you seem like almost a dumb one because you don't, you don't have those tools in front of you, but right. they don't even know how to read what you're reading, so it's kind of cool. I mean, you kind of go back and forth with it. Okay, yeah, yeah. you got the old school abacus out, and you're yeah, doing your exactly. calculations. And, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it sounds, yeah, it sounds like most things. Like, you know, it's one, you know, if you go, everything goes well, then most people could do it, but it's when something goes wrong is when you, that's exactly. when the training really kicks yeah. in. Yeah, Definitely. Now, I've always been taught, uh, I don't know who told me this, but uh, there seems to be truth to it. You never panic on an air plane unless you I always look at the flight attendants first and they're always like as long as they look relaxed you're fine if they look nervous about something then it's time to get nervous is there truth to that because they know they've felt everything they've done everything and yeah so if you're oh, rocking up and down but they're just sitting there laughing and have you know in the back you're like okay you're okay definitely but if they start to look stressed then then yes okay. I would agree to that I would hands down agree to that I've been on numerous flights just traveling back and forth you country or states to stay and I've had some really bad turbulence experience I've had where an engine failed I mean I've and this is the Airbus we're talking about okay. so I caught on fire and I'm looking out the window like well I picked the cheapest seat I could find <laughs> <laughs> it's like right next yeah. to the window <laughs> Cheapaware.com. <laughs> what do you expect? I am noticing a pattern here. <laughs> I'm a student. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever getting on a plane with you. <laughs> you have no choice. I, I do Let's hit the go. I hit the cheap button often uh, uh, myself. But so from here, um, just uh, next steps. I'll let you go. I know you. You're so sweet to stop by and bring alcohol. Um, and, 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 but, my friend. But, and, and your friend, my goodness, I know, I've, I haven't, yeah, this is lovely, believe me, I, this is, I was going to make a dumb joke, um, you, uh, from here though, you go, do you have to go through, if the ultimate goal is perhaps someday commercial pilot, mm -hmm. maybe helicopter, um, do you have to go through the ranks that you're going through, do you have to go like the, the single engine, double engine, do you have to do all that, or can you just say, hey, no, screw everyone, <laughs> I'm not joining the Air Force, I, I want to be a pilot, a, a United pilot, and fly mm -hmm. a gigantic airplane. Well, if I say that, there's a lot to come into that, and that is still to do the single and the multi-engine. Um, okay. It's all the instrument ratings. It's 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 a lot of work, and I, I mean, I prefer to do, to start all the way at the bottom, because it's, I mean, you have other people's lives in your hand at that point. You have your own life in your hand, your own life in your hands, and I, I think that the more that you... But I put myself in, and the more s classes I take, I've taken like one class twice. Not because I didn't know it; it's just because I feel like it's good to know. Okay. And it makes a difference in my own life and my own understanding of flying. Yeah. So I'm looking at at least another four four years ahead of me. Okay. Yeah. But that's doable, and that's doing it sort of not full time, part time exactly. when you can. Yes, when I can. And right. Then Still from... slinging jewelry on the side. Exactly. <laughs> 
Bringing beer too. But bringing beer, bringing beer that, along. That is the foundation of our friendship. I believe it's the very first night we ever met. It was it was over beer. It and, was. And yes, I was instantly. I said, "Well, this person's going to be in my life forever." Yeah. <laughs> and then we tried to think martinis one night, and we're just like, "No, we got to go back." We to the are, we yeah. did actually. We tried to branch out and be sophisticated adults, and it's like, "No, nope, let's just yeah, let's get let's just go back back to the basics." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I have the black belt of uh, of beer drinking. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you, know, you don't have to agree so readily. Okay. Uh, I cannot thank you enough for your time, for your sidekick, Kim. Kim, say hi to everybody. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and for the lovely cocktails, guys. Uh, we will be back uh, with another fantastic... <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the beers are kicking in <laughs> with another great episode of Greetings from Somerville. I think that's what I'm going to call this. I haven't named it yet. Do you have any ideas for a good name for this thing? Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> Hey, thanks so much for listening to Greetings from Somerville. Please subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes, and listen to all three of my stand-up comedy albums for free on Spotify, Pandora, and SiriusXM. I'm Michael Somerville. Have a great day. Greetings from Somerville.